Hello, everybody. Um, for those of you who haven't uh, seen me before, my name is Freddie Wen. I'm one of the uh, co organizers for the MIT COVID 19 Challenge um, and one of the co leads for the Beat the Pandemic Round Two. Uh, so, I want to thank all of the participants uh, for uh, the last 48 hours that you spent with us. I hope that you uh, been able to not only get to meet some great people to work on some ideas that you truly, truly are passionate about uh, in terms of solving these problems and developing a solution that will have an impact. Um, of course, we couldn't do this without the wealth of partners uh, and sponsors that we've had to support not just this particular event in terms of the Be the Pandemic 2, but the entire MIT COVID-19 challenge, which was kicked off uh, two and a half months ago in mid-March. And now this is now our fifth event uh, that we've launched. And you know, this really speaks towards what we're doing here is that this is really gonna take the entire world, the entire globe, the entire community to come together to solve on these challenges. Uh, next slide. And of course, I want to very much thank all of the judges uh, that spent the last four or five hours with us listening to all of your uh, uh, pitches over the week that, that you uh, worked on for the weekend. Um, they really represent all corners of uh, the ecosystem from MIT to academia to hospital systems to again really speaks to the diversity of partners uh, that we have I of course want to thank all of the mentors that have spent the entire weekend with each and every one of you um, you know helping you with your ideas everything from the problem definition aspect to the solution development to helping you point you in the right direction uh, a lot of them have been involved with our other events uh, and continue to be involved a lot of them have continued to stay involved with the teams after the weekend uh, so I certainly encourage all the teams, um, as you make your decision about whether to continue or not, to really reach out back to those mentors uh, and continue those conversations. Reach out to the partners that you've interacted with and continue to uh, develop those relationships. The next slide. Yeah. And of course, really couldn't do this without the awesome, awesome volunteer team that is behind uh, the Beat the Pandemic 2. Um, this is just a small sliver here. Um, but, you know, I want you guys to see, that, you know, everyone that you see right now on the screen is the entire organizing committee. Uh, and I think we're still even missing a few. So, you know, please, please, please thank them for all of the hard work that they put in. Uh, not just only this weekend, but the last few weeks, uh, bringing this event together, working with uh, each and every single one of you to uh, develop your ideas, put your teams together, um, and, and to present. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Hannah uh, to introduce our track leads for tonight. Hi, great. So it's so exciting. It's time to announce our track winners. So if we don't mind to advance the screen. So first we'll be doing track A, who was led by Fatima, Mikkel, and Mara Fitzsimmons helped out a lot and we really appreciate them. So I think uh, Fatima is gonna announce the track A winners. Hi track A, it was an honor, pleasure working with you throughout the weekend. I learned so much from you guys and I loved seeing how you iterated on your solution. For the track A winners, we chose, the judges chose, Connected Health, congratulations. Um, this problem dealt with low-income populations in India who do not have a centralized hotline or access to telemedicine. Hence, they do not know whom to contact, what to do, and where to go. The solution utilized a non-internet-based system, so it was more accessible by all. Next, Virtual Village. Congratulations, Virtual Village. The problem they tackled was expectant 
new mothers feel increasingly isolated, scared, and lonely during COVID-19. Their solution created a virtual community for new and expecting mothers during, during COVID-19 and beyond. Guardian Health Remote Analytics, congratulations. Their problem dealt with, there's a 30-day hospital readmissions have massive economic hardship on hospitals. They sought big at-home patient monitoring and predictive analytics that drive meaningful clinical decision-making in order to avoid hospitalization. And Team 006, congratulations. This solution, uh, this problem was basically uh, visually impaired people have, uh, have to touch Braille when they enter elevators, but because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, touch points were no longer safe, such as Braille. So they sought to install a UV light fixture that will be attached above button banks and elevators that will disinfect Braille services and buttons on it. Definitely a, all great solutions for getting non-COVID patients back into, health, into the healthcare system. Thank you, Track A. Great. Yes, congratulations all Track A winners. So next we have uh, Track B, Wellbeing, Adapting to the New Normal, who was led by David with Anne, along with Chris, who helped out a lot. So David, why don't you go ahead? Absolutely, so happy to announce the winners for Track B, drum roll. So, Cora, amazing solution that is going to revolutionize dating, dating and social distancing times. And really, the one thing that stood out about this team was just their commitment, the way that they really work together different time zones, they just crushed it at night. They were just working nonstop, preparing, refining their pitch. They did such a great, not just their pitch, their idea. Did such a great job. Um, last second, and not, not, not too far off from number one, uh, Elder Wand. So Elder Wand is uh, for senior homes. And what they do is they provide safety procedures for, for senior homes in the COVID times. And specifically, uh, enabling remote connection with seniors uh, and kind of creating community between college students and seniors, high school kids and seniors and so on. Uh, CoSafe, another great solution. Uh, CoSafe was uh, really, I think, one of the one of the favorites of the judges in terms of just how well thought out it was. So I, we really commend you guys for, for how, how, how much effort you put into thinking about this long, long term. And then Greenjoy, last but not least, our 14-year-old our Steve Jobs over there. Um, uh, amazing kid. Uh, you guys did a great job. The whole team did. Uh, you, know, you, you really drove it home in terms of connecting the, the, the human element of, of your story and really, really connecting with, with, with the core of what you were trying to do, which is help people connect with nature. So I'm super proud of this whole track. Um, and, and, and Chris, if you can please say something, because you guys really were the ones that kicked this off. And, and you made it happen. So, and please feel free to chime in. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, this is really nice. Um, track B is definitely going to beat the pandemic. And uh, uh, it was really a pleasure working with you guys. And it was nice. Yeah. Uh, hope to see you guys soon in, in post hackathon and QIT. Congratulations, everyone. Awesome. Great. Well, next we're going to move on to track C, growing up and educating in the new normal, uh, who was led by Dana along with Sydney. And I think Dave also played a big role in that. So Dana, please take it away. Thank you. Um, we uh, also, I would add uh, Jesse uh, that's been joining us in a different time zone and been an amazing help. Uh, so thank you for all Sydney, Jesse, and uh, Dave for your help, guys. Thank you for the amazing team, Team C. I on track C. You guys been uh, just phenomenal. Kicking off on Friday with uh, 70 pitches, narrowing them down, and just uh, hacking them nonstop all weekend. So it was really impressive. Uh, uh, you're all winner in, uh, in my eyes for all the hard work and the progress that you made for the last uh, two days. It's been amazing. 
Uh, these are the three that the judges felt that uh, have the ideas that can progress further right now based on the information they provided. But uh, you know, you're all uh, a winner, uh, like I said. So the COVID collab uh, is one of uh, the teams, which is basically their problem they're trying to solve is looking into the way to engage the students more. And the solution that they came up with is to um, have a smart and useful user-friendly user dashboard that would identify and analyze learning styles, student engagement, and leadership potential uh, by integrating uh, with existing education platform. Uh, so congratulations. The next team is uh, Unify. And uh, Unify is uh, doing a really interesting work uh, trying to address uh, uh, find matching students with uh, internship in a particular populations in um, um, Mexico. And uh, the solution they came up with is a mobile device, a mobile application that can provide instant access uh, to hundreds of um, opportunities for industries and academic uh, in Latin America. Uh, the third team is uh, Clinicos, and uh, they, you know, have one of those big issues that we're all uh, probably looking, feeling uh, coming out of COVID-19 is really targeting the mental health issues uh, and uh, with a huge impact, I think uh, that we have a lot to offer in that space. So uh, what they're looking for is to develop a solution to connect users to the solutions uh, for, for their psychological needs. And uh, last but not least is the uh, 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 the, the numero uno, uh, and that team is looking into the high school uh, chemistry students that are unable to effectively uh, conduct chemistry experiments, which is a very innovative and interesting idea. Uh, so their solution was, was to create an augmented environment uh, that provides uh, interactive experiences and real-time feedback to students with teachers and lab partners uh, input. And that was uh, track C. So congratulations, everyone. Anna, you're unmuted. I was muted, sorry, rookie mistake. So awesome, thanks, Dana, we appreciate that. So next we have D, track D, healthcare disparities, protecting vulnerable populations, which was led by Dania with the help of Joshua and uh, Kiliana and some other people helped out. So if you wanna give them a shout out, Dania, the people that helped you, but we'll let you announce your winners. All right, thank you. Um, it was such a pleasure working with everyone in Track D uh, this weekend to hack around healthcare disparities and protecting vulnerable populations. Again, thank you to Joshua, Kiliana, uh, Michael, and uh, Michelle and Dallas, who were tremendous help uh, this weekend as uh, we were uh, organizing. Uh, the judges had a very, very difficult task in our track. Uh, we had a lot of uh, excellent ideas uh, from the different teams. And uh, I'm uh, happy to announce the winning teams. Uh, the first team was uh, ENY. Uh, this team was uh, looking to close the gap in food access with an on-demand solution that brings together community partners. Uh, congratulations, ENY. Uh, the next team is beyond the words of uh, beyond the word of COVID-19, and this team uh, is looking to tailor existing community resources to be more readable and for providing an automated calling service with health information uh, to the elderly. Congratulations, BTW. Uh, our next team was uh, Allo Health. Uh, this team uh, uh, created a platform to make hydroponic farming more accessible uh, to address COVID uh, exacerbated food insecurities. Congratulations. And uh, last but not least, we had uh, MedPal. Uh, and uh, this team uh, was uh, looking to connect under-resourced Chinese immigrants with Chinese speaking medical students through a platform that they put together. Uh, to prevent misinformation and to strengthen community trust uh, in the uh, medical system. Uh, again, congratulations to all the teams in uh, TRACD for bringing so many innovative solutions forward uh, this weekend, and especially congratulations to all the winning team. Yes. Thank you, Danya. We appreciate it. And congratulations, Track D. How exciting. And so we're going to go on to Track E now, which is surfacing and communicating the the COVID-19 truth, which was led by Jesus and Eric. And then I, or, and then I think Eric Yang helped out, helped out a little bit as well as Marjorie. So if Jesus, you want to go ahead? Yes, uh, I don't see my slide. Yes, uh, here, here we are. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we had the honor to have to, to be working one of the most difficult uh, problems of our times. Yeah, 
So facing and communicating the COVID-19 truth. And uh, the, the COVID-19 truth, I mean, this problem is not only related to COVID. We are seeing it now, but this has been around for, for ages. How do we really bring to the people those things which are evidence-based where people do believe in that? The problem is when you don't spread the truth, wars start. Wars never start by fighting, but shooting a, 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 a weapon. They always start by words. Somebody says the wrong thing somewhere and has the wrong beliefs. How do we tackle this? How can we people bring really with the right amount of information? And now these days it's about COVID. Yeah? We have been hearing all the fake news, all the things that you hear, uh, new receipts, uh, vitamin, whatever. So it's really a problem. I am so honored that uh, even this being a problem way above uh, uh, our, our problems with the COVID-19, we have three teams, SciGuide, a Covery Fight, and Oasis, which the judges uh, found they were really, really, really very good and very interesting. And that with this, we can maybe uh, discover something and uh, find out something, how can we tackle uh, the, the problem with the fake news that we are seeing COVID-19. SciGuide is about the, the science, how to explain, how to bring to the people the science behind the, the regulatory policies. Uh, how can we make the people aware of this? This is what we believe in. This is what our government, our local government, our uh, regulators believe in. Covery fight, so for them, uh, we are all, we have been there for, for weeks uh, now about COVID-19. There is a fatigue. People don't hear anymore. You just talk to somebody, you don't care. And now when the truth starts surfacing, people stop listening to the truth. How can we bring it to the people? And uh, uh, Oasis, so extremely uh, um, interesting approach. How can we bring the, these experts in social media? They are not heard scientific people, people with uh, people that really have, are studying this uh, virus and this disease, how can we bring them into social media where people obviously do listen and do hear what other people are saying? Those were uh, our winners. Uh, track E, you are the best. I love you. We, uh, I don't know how countless hours we spent there communicating, talking, thinking, marketing plans, business and whatever. Really, really amazing, guys. So keep doing your great work. Whatever you plan to do, I wish you the best uh, future that you want to have. Thank you so much for being with us. Great. Thanks, Jesus. Next, we're going to go to track F, which was testing, improving the test, expanding access, and sharing results, led by Tim and Olympia. So Tim and Olympia, if you want to Sure. Yeah. Uh, first, want a big thank you to um, Olympia, Nitya, and Ignacio, who who helped um, behind the scenes, and a huge congratulations to to all the all all the participants and finalists in, in Track F. Um, an amazing, an amazing track. Um, you know, focused on testing and improving the testing results, access, sharing resources. I mean, you can't get m much broader. Um, in terms of, of information, data collection, in terms of technologies that can be analyzed, um, tackling this track. And um, every team just did an amazing job um, at doing that, despite the complexities and, and some of the, the broadness that was, that was uh, confronted with them. Um, secondly, the, the amazing uh, people who were able to iterate and, and take um, the, the feedback and, and turn it around in such a short time uh, made this track really amazing to work with um, and that that goes a long way and respectful to the mentors and everyone else uh, involved so with that said the judges had a tough time um, so we had four winners uh, flowlytics quarantine innovators homes and Coven informed uh, flowlytics was really focused around um, you know the the struggle of companies trying to reopen as they're seeing their their profit and loss sheets um, you know, fluctuate uh, and able to prioritize the health, uh, which has impacts for, for both sides. So their solution was software uh, to manage the, the space um, physically and the workflows of that space, um, get data to the employees for, for contact testing and, and preventative workspace management so that both sides could prioritize their health and recovery. Uh, awesome, awesome solution. Uh, Quarant Innovators 
Um, they basically expose the problem that we all know re reopening the country is a lot of testing. Um, and one of the bottlenecks is lack of testing equipment and, and personnel for that equipment. So they created something called TestNet, which was this web platform um, to connect the, the, the diagnostic industry within the university setting uh, to, to conduct testing. Um, really, really great solution as well to that problem. Uh, Holmes, um, again, addressing the la lack of uh, testing kits in, in developing countries and low income areas, a huge, um, a huge exposure of COVID is health inequity and health disparities. Um, so it was addressing that solution, uh, which was pretty impactful. Um, then their solution was a contactless sensor fashioned out of actually a smartphone camera. Um, which pre-screened the patients by monitoring their vital signs. And there was very low cost or wastage, wastage um, compared to the, the scarcity of the COVID test kits. And lastly, co-informed. Um, I think this was their, their first hack. Uh, loved their energy in, in all the testing and, and proactiveness. Um, and, and they were really uh, focused around uh, small businesses that are challenged um, around security and emergency loans um, to reopen. So this was about resource um, aggregation and information aggregation and making that digestible. So they provided a, a wide range of built-in meta, meta models that bridge that gap between availability and feasibility for that, for that problem. So awesome job, pleasure to work with all of you and um, best of luck in the future. Great, thank you, Tim. Moving on, next we have track G. So the new hotspot, nursing homes and assisted living Sorry, my computer broke. There we go. Nursing home and assisted living facilities. We have Alana, Beth, and if, Alana, if you want to take it away. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the slide is still on F, though. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we had a really great track. A lot of folks I know weren't um, necessarily super enthused about the tracks for some people when they first came on. And I have to say that everyone just rose to the challenge and brought so many disparate, disparate perspectives and enthusiasm. Um, some of the teams were really struggling in the beginning and by Saturday night and Sunday morning, they just really brought some stuff together. So we have um, four really fantastic teams. Um, Care Owl uh, was just super high energy, um, had a really great idea from the beginning, fine tuned it. And so their problem was really, excuse me, looking at, um, you know, frontline health workers that we typically don't think about. So normally we're thinking about nurses and physicians, maybe paramedics, but these are really the very frontline workers, the CNAs and other folks who are interacting with patients a lot um, in assisted living facilities, nursing homes, and most of them have almost zero training, um, even in infection control, and they don't have access to this information uh, to help them. So their solution was to create a web-based and mobile platform that'll help these frontline workers get some education. They can go in its peer to peer training, it's um, training resources from other places. I think they did a fantastic job. Their team was very diverse, um, even though it was small, and they were able to look at the marketing and they came up with a great, uh, great solution. The next one is Live Connected. Um, and this team had just a really fun idea. Um, and I think one of our judges put it really well. Everyone's been focusing on the social distancing by isolating us all at home, sitting behind a computer or a cell phone on Zoom or whatever. And um, this one starts to bring people out again, but in a safe way. So social distancing is um, an issue, um, but it causes isolation. It's necessary, um, but it can be just as deadly as smoking. Um, it's been amplified with COVID-19 and especially in our elderly population, uh, depression, just lack of social contact can lead to some mental health and other physical health issues. So their solution is a web-based platform um, that basically brings people from the community together with um, those who are in nursing homes. So it includes things like having a band go and sit in a parking lot and play for, for people and they can just open their windows and enjoy some live music. Uh, so bringing people together, but with social distancing, really great idea. And then Corona Valve, um, they were addressing the problem of these horrible masks that we all have to wear that are cutting into our faces and really uncomfortable. Um, and I think they also kind of speak to the um, issue of reusing the masks over and over again or having some wastage. And so complications with wearing masks for long periods of time in nursing homes, the solution, um, they came up with this really great little um, uh, face kind of thing that you can add to the mask that uses copper and it reuses the valve over and over and over again. You can put it on multiple different face masks um, and it was just a really great idea. Um, the last one was Staph Optima or Riscify. 
Um, and this was another team that their project just really came together. They did a fantastic job of um, bringing a bunch of different people together. So their problem was looking at nursing home staff, um, which, are, which are at high risk for contracting and transmitting COVID-19 to patients. Um, and their solution was to do um, look at individual workers um, and look at their risk and then create an optimal testing uh, strategy for each nursing facility. And, you know, there's some technology involved with it that I think is really easy and accessible. Um, but again, we had some really great teams. Everybody did a good job. And I think there are a lot of folks who can keep moving forward, even though they weren't winners today. So good, good times. Thank you. Yes, congratulations to Track G winners. Next, we're going to move on to the Track H. So Track H is the right place at the right time, medical equipment and supplies, which was led by Rachel and Sai. So Rachel, if you wanna go ahead and tell us about your winners. Yeah, could you move on to the track eight slide? Thank you. So thank you so much for being an amazing track over the weekend. I really love working with all of you. We have four winners, Face, Plant, face Mask Factory, Plasma Life, HUD, and Asili Hub. So Face Mask Factory, they worked on how like physicians and healthcare workers every day, they have to wear these uncomfortable and not very well-fitted masks. And their solution used a computer vision to map individual spaces from pictures and groups them into sizes to create a more personalized and comfortable fit for these workers. In Plasma Life, they worked on a problem of how blood banks lack proficiency to manage the supply of plasma and blood component donations. And their solution was an app that will help blood centers with coordination and inventory management and distribution. And the third group was HUD. Their problem was how ordering medical supplies is painful and difficult for elderly people. And their solution was a portable device and service model for easy ordering and management of deliveries. Our last team was Asili Hub. Their problem was that Sub-Saharan African countries are struggling to procure PPE for COVID-19 response. And they have a limited and constricted global supply of PPE leading to them having underinvested and in domestic manufacturing of PPE. So their solution, they tackled this by have improving the availability of PPE in Sub-Saharan Africa by having re re repurposing the manufacturing of the continent through targeted financing, technical consulting services, and enabling market access to a digital marketplace. Congratulations to all the teams, and thank you guys all for putting forth so many good, great ideas over the weekend. Congratulations to everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. So now we're going to move on to our continuing teams. So. Group I, or Track I, Continuing Teams, was led by Paul and Henry. So Paul, do you want to speak a little bit about your winners? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Hannah. Um, I just want to start off by saying, wow, looking at all the teams that joined us for the first time this weekend and all the progress they made is incredible. One thing that I'm not sure if uh, it, it was announced yet is that all of the winning teams that have been announced so far are going to leave this weekend with a $500 cash prize. Um, and that's huge support for them as they move forward. Now we're gonna transition into our continuing teams. Those are teams who joined us for the first time uh, back two months ago for Beat the Pandemic Part One. They've rejoined us this weekend to continue on the same projects that they started then. And we've seen excellent progress since. These continuing teams were competing for $5,000. So the winning teams that we're about to announce will walk away with $5,000 to put towards the progress they've made so far in furthering that. Uh, we do want to say a special thanks to the financial sponsors who are making that possible and really uh, facilitating the impact that these teams are having. Uh, that's just one of the resources that these teams are all receiving. Um, for these continuing teams, I do want to highlight that the judging criteria was a little bit different. It also looked at the progress that the teams have made since Beat the Pandemic One, and looks at the progress that they made this weekend. They made a lot of progress, let me tell you. Not only did they make progress on their project and the impact that their project is having, but also individually, both personally and professionally. So we're really excited about the progress they've made so far and the progress that they're going to make on their path forward. Regardless of who the winners are, I do want to highlight how all of the participant, participants that we've seen um, really demonstrate the, the entrepreneurial spirit and hacking mentality that we like to see at MIT. Um, I do also want to highlight that the judges, um, they wished that they could have awarded uh, more teams. And with that, I'm going to continue on into uh, track I. So in track I, uh, the first winning team was Team Spread the Facts. 
uh, they deployed a communications campaign to provide information to lower income African American populations to protect themselves against COVID-19. And I also want to highlight the progress that they've made. They distributed uh, over 4,500 informational handouts and masks to Roxbury, Massachusetts residents. They've also developed their plan to move forward to reach an additional over 15,000 residents uh, in Roxbury alone. Next up is Team Taking Back 2020. Team Taking Back 2020 developed uh, an SMS-based system for, um, oh, is that? yeah, an SMS-based system um, for patients to receive information um, on community resources and connect with social work. Um, so they developed their solution around uh, resources like food, finances, employment, mental health, and testing. And they've also incorporated 85 volunteer uh, patient navigators. This weekend, they also built their SMS-based user survey tool. So we're really excited about the progress from Team Taking Back 2020. Last but not least in Track I is Team WePool. They're developing intelligent pool testing for COVID-19, allowing them to increase capacity of testing up to three times over. Uh, they've made tons of progress. They've developed all sorts of simulations for their pool testing, and they've also started on the path of forming partnerships with, with key entities that they'll need to move this forward. So we're really excited to see where all, all of these teams and, and the other teams that participated in Track I take their innovations. So congrats to all. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Stephanie, to, to talk about the next track. Awesome, yeah, so Track J is also one of our continuing team's tracks. So the three companies you see here are going to receive $5,000 each, and I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of every single team in this track, but just to highlight these three really quickly, Ulivity is a smart digital waiting room. It was one of the winners from our uh, first Beat the Pandemic one in Track C. Uh, and since then, <laughs> Beat the Pandemic one, they were selected for Advancing Innovation in Dermatology Incubator, have been in talks with the VA's innovation ecosystem for a potential pilot, and have launched an active pilot and have had hundreds of uses. Viral Science is tackling the misinformation problem. They provide a central hub with information that's impartial, science-based, and easy to understand and focus on bite-sized pieces of information that can be shared across social platforms with the power to go viral. Since Beat the Pandemic 1, this team has launched a prototype, have brought on advisors, and kicked off conversations with potential partners. This weekend, they developed a functional mobile prototype, did loads of user research, and refined both their challenge and their solution workflow. Covis understands that social distancing and quarantining are causing many issues, including unemployment, and know that data will be necessary for us to transition to the new normal. Since Beat the Pandemic 1, they have developed algorithms, done a ton of user experience research and design, have received a DESI innovation partnership, and this weekend with new team members, built out an impressive amount of tech resulting in a new usable proof of concept. So these three are, are excellent examples of the breadth of needs during the crisis, from supporting the health system with a product that is needed both today and in the future, to dealing with false information and ensuring accurate data has a way to be seen and understood, to focusing deeply on what better data sets can do to help us get to a new normal. Next slide. So congratulations to all of the winners and we can't wait to keep supporting all of the teams as they develop, deploy and scale. So we're here for you regardless if you are on one of these winning slides or not. We'll be sending out a post hack guide with more information about how to continue, including technical resources and funding sources and tons more information for you to keep going. Next slide. So that said, we're just so proud of you. And we saw how hard you all worked this weekend and how much progress you made from Friday night to today. And it's inspiring and it's incredibly impressive. Our partners and mentors and judges are all invested in helping you move forward from here. Our team at the MIT Challenge is here to support every team that chooses to continue, whether you were named a winner tonight or not. Teams have come from events like this that have gone on to change the world. And that's what we're trying to do here after all. So please stay involved in the community. You can follow MIT versus COVID on Twitter and MIT COVID-19 Challenge on LinkedIn for updates. We'll be sending emails to get your feedback on this weekend and continue to engage with teams to figure out who's going to continue on and what you need so that we can keep this movement going. So for now, 
you know, go get some sleep. <laughs> you all deserve it. You did an amazing job. Thank you again to our partners who helped make this happen, to the judges and the mentors who helped the team so much, to the fully volunteer team that brought this to life and ran it so well this weekend. And to all of the participants, you're all rock stars and we can't wait to see what you do next. So Freddie, would you like to say any final words before we send these teams to bed? <laughs> I think you took all the words out of my mouth. <laughs> um, no, but in all honesty, thank you so much to, I can't thank everybody enough in terms of the entire organizing team that put this uh, together, that you know did all of the behind the scenes work that a uh, few of you probably saw or, or know about, but it's, uh, it's been a delightful experience uh, being able to get to work with each and every single one of you. Um, I'm so glad to be able to build this community of individuals that are passionate about making that difference in the world. And this is truly one of the reasons that makes uh, this initiative uh, very special. And I think, of course, thank you so much again to the mentors, the judges, the sponsors and partners. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, it really does take a whole ecosystem uh, to bring these ideas to life and to uh, uh, continue with those. And as Stephanie mentioned, please, please give us your feedback on that survey that's coming out uh, later today. Um, you know, continue to iterate and improve on our process every time. Uh, continue to stay engaged with each other, with the mentors, with the partners, with us at MIT. Let us know how we can best help you. We'll do our best uh, to try and help you guys as much as we can on your next trajectory. Some follow-up surveys uh, next, uh, probably at the end of next this coming week. Um, with that, I thank you again to everybody and uh, stay in touch. The workspace on Slack will continue to stay open in its premium version for the next three months, but we won't close the workspace. We so continue to use it and stay active there, and uh, join us on our social media. Follow. Look forward to seeing what you guys make.